Hello, welcome to Inspired Word. Today we're going to read 2 Samuel chapter 23, the last words of David. Now these are the last words of David. The oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the oracle of the man who was raised on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks by me. His word is on my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The Rock of Israel has said to me, When one rules justly over men, ruling in the fear of God, he dawns on them like the morning light, like the sun shining forth on a cloudless morning, like rain that makes grass to sprout from the earth. For does not my house stand so with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, altered in all things and secure. For will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But worthless men are like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be taken with the hand. But the man who touches them arms himself with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they are utterly consumed with fire. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. Joshua Bathshebeth, a Tachmanite, he was chief of the three. He wielded his spear against 800 whom he killed at one time. And next to him, among the three mighty men, were Eliezer the son of Dodo, the son of Ahoi, he was with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle, and the men of Israel withdrew. He rose and struck down the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clung to the sword. And the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the men returned after him only to strip the slain. And next to him was Shema, the son of Agi, the Haraite. The Philistines gathered together at Lehi, where there was a plot of ground full of lentils, and the men fled from the Philistines. Silly Israelites, the battle is the Lord's. Oh well, more honor for Shema. But he took his stand in the midst of the plot and defended it, and struck down the Philistines, and the Lord won a great victory. And three of the thirty chief men went down and came about harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam, when a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. And David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, that is by the gate. And the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and carried and brought it to David. But he would not drink of it. He poured it out to the Lord and said, Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. Now Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief of the thirty, and he wielded his spear against three hundred men, and killed them, and won a name beside the three. He was the most renowned of the thirty, and became their commander, but he did not attain to the three. Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, was a valiant man, of Kebzil, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two aerials of Moab. The Hebrew word aerial means Lion of God. Yeah, I bet the men that Benaniah fought were as fierce as lions, but their appearance was lion-like as well. Now before you dismiss lion-like men as pure nonsense, please know that Leontiasis, Ossia, though rare, has been around for millennia. According to an article from the Forbes website written by bioarchaeologist Christina Kilgrove, the medical term Leotiasis Ossia was first used by ancient Greek physician Rufus of Ephesus to describe facial bone deformities that make the sufferer appear to have a lion's face. Rufus believed the condition was caused by leprosy or elephantiasis, but today doctors know it can be brought on by various diseases that cause extra growth of bones in the face, particularly the maxilla 
or upper jaw. Although this condition can result from syphilis, tumors, and gigantism, the most common culprit is craniofacial fibrosis dysplasia, a gene mutation that occurs in the early stages of fetal development. Not only did Benaniah and kill two Ariels of Moab, he also went down and struck on a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. And he struck down an Egyptian, a handsome man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but Benaniah went down to him with a staff and snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things did Benaniah the son of Jehoiada and won a name beside the three mighty men. He was renowned among the thirty, but he did not attain to the three. And David set him over his bodyguard. Please bear with me as I attempt to say these Israelite names correctly. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was one of the thirty. Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shema of Harad, Elika of Herod, Heliz, the Pelethite, Ira, the son of Ekish, of Tekoa, Abiezer, of Anathoth, Mabane, the Hushathite, Zalman, the Ahoite, Mahari, of Netopheth, Halim, the son of Baana, of Netopheth, Etai, the son of Ribai, of Gibeah, of the people of Benjamin, Benaiah, of Pirathon, Hedai, of the brooks of Gosh, Abialban, the Arbathite, Asmapheth, of Bahurim, Eliaba, the Shaalbanite, the sons of Jashan, Jonathan, Shema, the Hararite, Ahim, the son of Sharar, the Hararite, Elephiat, the son of Ahaspe, of Maeka, Eliam, the son of Ahithophel, the Gilanite, Hezro of Carmel, Pere, the Arbite, Igel, the son of Nathan, of Zoba, Bani the Gadite, Zelik, the Ammonite, Nahari, of Beeroth, the armor-bearer of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, Ira the Ithrite, Garab the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, 37 in all. Well, that was our list of heroes for today's reading. Remain faithful in obedience to God. Trust in his ability to come through despite the challenges stacked against you. And your name too will be written on Heaven's Hall of Fame. Alright guys, next time we're going to read Chapter 24, David's Census. And finish the book of 2 Samuel. So we'll be starting 1 Kings here pretty soon. Until then, I just want to thank you for listening. And I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. And reveal marvelous things to you as you read his word. Stay humble and true to the faith, my friends. Until next time, bye for now.